As someone who makes YouTube videos, I would have never thought I would end up being the owner of an enormous Minecraft Anarchy server. But my curiosity took over. I wanted to see and eventually share with all of you what running an Anarchy server is really like. So I created the Salsi one Anarchy server. Today, we'll go over what my plans are for the future of the server. Over the course of two months of the server being online, myself and my team have been constantly managing the server to keep it running, whether it's the lag, chunk bans, or bots. Running an Anarchy server is not something where you can just leave it running and walk away. It's a constant struggle to keep the server operating smoothly. But luckily, for the most part, the server usually ends up running fine enough. Now let's get into a few statistics about the server. Since I opened the server on February 7th, 2020, over 30,000 unique players have logged in, and the world size has grown to a very impressive 400 gigabytes in size. This is absolutely massive. Just imagine the amount of bases found within that world. And don't even get me started about the numerous groups on the server. There were tons of them. I'm sure many friends were made and lost. And those groups have also created some absolutely insane builds. It's amazing to see how people can create order in a server that doesn't even have any rules. So yeah, a lot has happened on this server over these two months. But instead of looking at the past, I want to start looking towards the future of the Sal C1 Anarchy server. After lots of internal discussion with my team and others, I've had to make a very tough decision about the server's future. And I started to realize that I had two options that would determine the server's fate. Keep it up indefinitely, or shut it down. Now there's pros and cons with both of these options. If I keep the server running indefinitely, players can continue building new things, form new groups, and pretty much keep everything going as usual. But there are many cons to this, like having to upgrade the server storage, or staying up to date with patching new exploits. Another con is that the server may start to lose interest over time, and from looking at the statistics, the server player count has decreased since my last video about it. And that's the other thing. It's no secret that this server relies specifically on my videos about it to keep its interest, and I just don't see that as a good long-term solution for keeping it alive. Now the biggest con about keeping the server up is that I can hardly ever show you guys any builds or projects that people have made on the server. What I just showed you earlier was public information, and the reason I can't show you more is because videos and pictures of private builds could be found by others through coordinate exploits, and I don't want to just leak someone's base like that. For that reason, it heavily restricts what I can show to you guys, and pretty much stops me from doing what I originally intended on the server. That is, to show what it's really like being an admin on my server. And it's not just showing builds, but showing the specific techniques that I and my team use to keep this server running. And if I did that while the server was still running, people would immediately find ways to exploit the server with that information. Now for the other option. If I were to shut down the server, that would mean the end of life as we know it on the Sal C1 Anarchy server. Any ongoing projects would stop, groups would be lost, and it would pretty much be the end. But here's the thing. My original intention of this server was for it to be an experiment. An experiment that of course wouldn't last forever. And if I would have just straight up told you guys that my server was going to be an experiment, the actions of the players on the server wouldn't be natural like they are on 2B2T. So at this point, it's pretty clear that I've made my final decision. I will be closing the Sal C1 Anarchy server. I know this may be hard for some people, but it has to be done. Now looking even more forward into the future, what will happen next after the server is offline for good? Well, I'm not just going to close the server and never release the map. That would just be a slap in the face to those who put all their effort into the server. So I will be releasing the entire server map shortly after I close it down. And no. This isn't like the 100k 2B2T world download that I've talked about in a previous video, where you can't see any of the chest data, player logout spots, or inventories of those players. What I'm releasing is the actual map data, region files and all. And yes, this includes the player data files. You can see what is stored in the inventories and ender chests, see where players' final logout spots were, and much more. But that's not all. I have a plugin that logs every single block placed, every explosion made, every entity killed, every chest interaction, every player death, and much more on the server. That plugin is Corporatect. And as of recording this video, the database file is over 110 gigabytes. With this file, 
you can see in detail literally every single event that has taken place on the server, down to the tick. And I will be releasing this with the world download. This is absolutely extraordinary. Never in Minecraft history has something like this been released to the public. So data miners, I'm looking at you. This is your time to shine. For the first time ever, the public will have access to as far as I know, the largest Minecraft server map ever released. And that's not an exaggeration. Over 400 gigabytes of Minecraft terrain filled with builds created in complete anarchy. No longer will you be bound to the four chunks of render distance, or worrying about the anti-cheat kicking you, or the lag slowing you down. You see, that's why I decided to close my server. If I didn't, a release like this could never happen. So during these last few days of the server being up, do what you've always wanted to do. Leave your mark on the server. Build that monument you've always wanted to. Grief that base you've been eyeballing. Leave your legacy. Now let's talk dates. The server will close for good on April 13th at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, and I'll be there for the event, live. I'll start streaming at around 6 p.m. Eastern, and then, at 8 o'clock, I'll be typing the slash stop command for the very last time. Now right after this, my team and I have a lot of work to do. Immediately after the server closes, all the files on the server will start being downloaded and sorted. And this will take some time, as we have over 600 gigabytes of data we'll have to sort through. It's then a race to get a torrent live with the world files, player data, and core protect database. Once those files are up, I will publish them to my website, which is linked in the description below. And I'll be announcing when they'll be up on my Discord server and on my Twitter, which are also both linked in the description. Now before I go, I want to give my biggest thanks to these people, because without them, the server would have never happened. First. Warlord Nick, for helping me come up with the original idea for this server. Cortex, for making custom plugins that I would have never been able to make myself. Lazy Boy, for maintaining the server during times that I couldn't. Jack Sharkben, for originally hosting the server for us. Jake from Linus Tech Tips, for making our anti-cheat function properly. Rain, for general server maintenance and support. Scoot, for making our Q plugin work. Blob, for helping build the Q spawn. And finally, Pebblehost, for letting us use one of their very powerful machines to host the server all the way until closing. And if you want a server of your own from them, I'll have an affiliate link in the description of this video. Oh, and I also want to thank anyone else who I forgot to mention who has helped us along the way. Alright, well, that's about it. If you have any questions about this, I'll always have my comment section, Discord server, and Twitter open. And I hope to see all of you at the live stream. Again. I'll start around 6 p.m. Eastern Time on April 13th. That's all I have for today, guys. Now, I'd like to focus on something else.